His name is Ali Al Hussein ibn Sina, but he is also known as Avicenna, and he is arguably the most important philosopher in the history of Islam. He read all the books related to the philosophy of science until he becomes an expert in wide range of fields such as mathematics, algebra, astronomy, and metaphysics. He was hailed by scholars as the grand teacher Al Sheikh Al Ra'is, the chief teacher. Associate Professor Helmi has deep passion about Avicenna's historical life. Was born in the village of Asana on August 980 on the Bishan Resonance. His parents were high officials in the administration of Bohara Samar. As a child, he was very precocious and indeed polity in his time. When he aged of 10 years, he has been remembered the whole Akuran, Masha'Allah. He also has extraordinary intellectual skill when he could replace his teacher at his age of 14. What made him become a respected person until now among Muslims? when he never left his work and prayed to God to get his life. Avicenna has been recognized as one of the great figures of intellectual history by both East and West. He is remembered in history as arguably the greatest polymath of the Islamic Golden Age. We head to International Islamic University Malaysia, Campus Kuanta, to get more details about Avicenna's legendary our presenter, Ice Shah meets with the experts to get more information of Avicenna. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. When we are talking about medicines and anatomy, I bet you have heard of Hippocrates and Hippocrates Oath. But, have you ever heard of Ibn Sina and Conan Fieldtip? No, this is the problem. We have heard the biography of this great man. And now the questions are What have made Ibn Sina was a great man before? Actually, the main contribution of Ibn Sina is that he had wrote a very famous medical encyclopedia titled The Canon of Medicine, or in Arabic, we call it as um, Al Qanun Fitib. And the book contains the philosophy of medicine. He began to write the book at Jordan and he complete wrote the book at Hamadan. And amazingly, um, the book still remained popular until in the world over the subsequent six centuries. And actually, Ibn Sina had divided the book into five volumes, which is the first volume he concerned about the basic of medical and physiology um, principle and the second book he focused on the medical substances that which is he arranged it due to the alphabetical order with the general properties and in the third book he stressed on the diagnosis and treatment of the diseases uh, but only for the specific part of the body. And the fourth book, he covered the condition of disease, diseases for the all part of the body that related to each other, such as obesity. And the final book, which is the fifth book, he stressed on the formulary of compound remedies. Actually, this is the big contribution of Ibn Sina that made him as a great man. Avicenna's canon of medicine is a landmark of the history of the subject. Its value lies in accumulating the best knowledge in the world at the time into one accessible organized text. The canon would give the future generation something to rewrite. His contributions to anatomy firstly began with his deep interest in the field of philosophy of science. Avicenna is not just an Islamic philosopher, and Professor Daniel has the further details. Avicenna, as 
a very intellectual person. Has he ever come up with new ideas or new theories, Doctor? So, I will explain differences between Avicenna and Galen in concept of pain. Galen said that injuries were the only cause of pain, while Avicenna insists that the true cause of pain was a chain of the physical condition, which is temperament chain of the organ, whether there was injury or not. Avicenna states that the chain must be sudden, if not, the body would not feel anything. For example, a man that exposed to the heat during bath will not feel pain if the heat is increased slowly. But if the heat increases rapidly, the man will feel the pain because the body cannot adapt to the temperature. Avicenna also states that pain will still occur even when the original stimulus is not there. The end classified this as a not true pain and suggest doctor not to treat it because the stimulus is not there. This is consistent or parallel with modern theory which recognize that pain can often occur in absence of injury. Avicenna also pioneered the idea of intubation. It is the process of inserting a tube into the trachea of a patient to facilitate breathing. This method is still used today. is widely recognized as being the first person to have described the procedure of endotracheal intubation. In his chapter of treatment of respiratory distress, he described both endotracheal intubation and also tracheostomy to a moderately practical level of detail. Uh, regarding intubation, Avicenna explains the steps very concise. He said that there is no harm in inserting something such as a cane or it's like around which some cotton is worn to clear the airway and dilate it. One might also insert a tube made from gold or silver or they light into the pharynx to assist breathing. Avicenna continues to talk about the next step in airway management if this fails. And so, if the suffocation continues uh, and treatments are unsuccessful, then it will be beneficial to incise the trachea. The head is extended back and the skin is gripped and stretch back with hook before the incision is made. The trachea is then exposed and an incision is made in the middle between the trachea rings whereas avoiding cutting the cartilage. Uh, the edge of the cut skin are turned upwards and stitched without damaging the underlying tissue. Perhaps somewhat surprisingly, both intubation and tracheostomy have retained the same core producer steps as described by Avicenna a millennium ago, as well as, of course, the crucial and often life-saving rules in medical practice. There's one question that um, trigger our mind when I study about this Avicenna. Uh, among Muslim students nowadays, are we amazed with the contribution of Avicenna uh, since a lot of books and one of the most famous books uh, published by him is Canon of Medicine. And as students, and as especially Muslim students, we should be looking for the wisdom why we have to understand or appreciate uh, these scholars. This is because um, since um, we should aware, we should aware um, how determine. Uh, Avicenna and how patient uh, in knowledge since we are all aware that we must follow this uh, scholar uh, in terms of the way they learn because of uh, they will not neglect their knowledge after they finish all the syllabus but they share they share their knowledge uh, by publishing books and this is for the sake of uh, our target group our target group outside as ordinary people where ordinary people always uh, find find for the reference when we are studying a certain knowledge so we have to find um, a very expert expert scholars in certain uh, knowledge such as in anatomy and we found that Ibn Avicenna is very expert in this uh, knowledge of anatomy. Uh, as ordinary people, uh, we must uh, set our mind that um, that um, we must set our mind 
that uh, we should uh, search or we should understand deeply in every knowledge we learn. As Allah said in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 7, um, Allah said that uh, when you don't know a certain knowledge, go and find for the expert of that certain knowledge that you want to learn. So, uh, have patience in knowledge and have patience in everything that uh, we learn so uh, we can appreciate the contribution of this college.